Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shiva. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Welcome to my space. Um, on this channel, we talk about business, content creation tips, creative tips, inspiring creatives, anything that has to do with basically being a creative entrepreneur. So if you're a creative entrepreneur, this space is for you. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about um, my experience as an architecture student in Community University. And that's because I actually promised this video when I did my first Community University um, video. A lot of people were asking me, like, they want to um, know how it's like to study architecture in TU. And someone actually reminded me in my last video that she has been waiting for the vlog, for the video, you know. So, and I also have a Community University tour that's supposed to go up as well. So, um... I'll link that up in the cards okay so i'm going to just run down through quickly things key points basically you know things that you need to like consider studying architecture in Korean university so the first thing is the work environment so Korean university has a very very good work environment a good study environment as well so um these architecture studios basically have um a capacity so when you're even admitted into Korean university for architecture the capacity is 70. So once you pass the 70, they will not accept to more people. And that's because they want a situation where in the classroom, they have one table per student. So in 100 level, you have a capacity of 70, which usually has most of students. And then people usually fall out um, along the way. So it reduces as you go up. So as I was entering um, current phase architecture, where I think about 71 or 72 or so, and then by the time that's admitted and then by the time we resumed we were like 60 by the time we got to 200 level we kept dropping and dropping and we graduated at a number of i think 40 something i will check the graduation um list and just put it off for you guys so um basically the working environment is very comfortable because it is one table per student and secondly it's on the last floor of csd building and the higher you go the cooler the environment is and then the windows are on both sides so like the, the hall is long it's nine by nine meters by six, 18 meters very long so you have windows and windows on both sides and two huge doors so like there's always breeze and then there are fans i think they're about it should be three by six so that's like 18 fans Yes, that's where we have eating fans. There are lots of fans, so like it's really, really comfortable. And then we always we have a wardrobe or like a shelving area where we put our um, materials and stuff. So the environment is very nice, big, friendly, clean. We always clean it every morning. So yeah. Secondly, is lecturers. Lecturers are actually very, 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 very nice, and like they really are invested in your work and your creativity. So for every studio work, you are basically paired with a supervisor, and that person is going to supervise your work all through from design process to when you're done, conceptualization rather to when you're done with your design. Okay, that's for your studio work, which is actually very good. Secondly, other lecturers teaching other courses are really concerned about your application of what you're learning those courses into your design that's how architecture is basically so you have your studio design which is your usually four to one one to one basically the first course that is on the course registration list is called your design studio then you have other courses where they teach you what you apply in your design so structures teaches you things and columns um components teaches you windows doors um um, roofs all that stuff and then we have services which teaches you the mechanical part electrical part all that stuff of the building then you have town planning that is town planning you have economics um, building economics there's so many um i feel like in architecture you are doing a bit of every single aspect of other courses because it's also psychology in architecture there's um psychology yeah, actually designed for human beings so you have to consider how human beings react and how we behave our uh, human behavior basically so like for every course they're like so studying bits and pieces of other courses so for structures it's part of civil engineering uh, for the mechanics that's the home um plumbing and all that's part of mechanical engineering electric is part of electrical engineering so like we're doing a little of everything building economics is part of economics so we're doing little of everything so your lecturers are actually very very nice and like they understand that you need these particular things in your design process Okay, so for your studio work, I just wanted to mention a quick tip on how you can finish your studio on time because most of us actually end up not finishing or we like have like sleepless nights during the exam and like it's really hectic. So in my 200 level and 300 level, I was able to finish my studio before exam. Um, for my first design work, I finished my studio two weeks before exam and for the rest, I finished it the week before exam. So I'm the type of person that plans a lot and I always have timetables and I know what I'm supposed to draw in a particular day. So for every design project, you have like um, different sheets you're supposed to submit and like they are very necessary basically. Same thing you're going to do when it gets outside and actually like 
build, design and build. Basically, my advice is to draw a timetable for yourself. So from the moment they give you your design brief, you start your design work. Don't you? Don't relax. Mm -mm. Start the design work and start with your research your research first. When you research and you have an idea of what you want to do and all that thing, it's easier for you. Secondly, I would advise you to buy your sheets and panel them before you get to school. Panel them in pencil. Don't panel them in because sometimes your supervisor may say they want you to panel in a type of way. So panel them in pencil, buy your papers at home, panel them in pencil, take them to school. So all your sheets are paneled and they are numbered and named. You already have an idea of your sheets and what you're supposed to do. I'm going to put in the description your list of sheets. I, I can't really um, explain that here. Um, maybe I can put like a clip up, like show you some of my works that I've done in the past and like show you the sheets that I've done. Yeah, so I put a list of different things in the description so you can always check that out. If you like this video so far, subscribe guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. So um, basically you want to panel your sheets before you get to school. So when you get to school and go to your design brief, you won't be paneling your sheets because paneling takes a lot of time and it can waste your time. Do you understand? So what you'll be doing is focusing on your research. Then always sketch. In fact, don't even make it to sketch. There's no point in it. Don't make it to sketch. You're supposed to submit your sketches first for approval before you start drafting. Okay. So make sure you do your sketch very well. Use your grid book. I'll show you guys what your grid book looks like. Basically, you sketch on your grid book, meaning you're sketching to scale. So by the time you're transferring it to your drafting sheet, you're not really looking for what measurement is worth again you just know it by counting the boxes so you just transfer to your drafting paper and then i would advise you to always draw every single day in studio before going to the hall my classmates what they usually do is once supervisors come and check your progress they pack their sheets and go mm -mm. stay behind because they will leave around it's three to seven so they'll leave around five They'll come back, they, may come, they may come by like four and leave by like five. Okay, so you want to stay from that five to seven or even eight or eight thirty before you go to your hall. Because once you get to your hall, your friends will come to mount. Your friend, like you just get distracted. The time you even used to walk from your hostel, especially if it's in the afternoon, you tempted to go to cafe to buy food, to stop at this place, stop at that place, you get distracted and then to forget that you're actually supposed to go and continue drawing in the hall. Then, um, if possible, have your own drawing table in the hall because they don't have drawing tables in the halls. I don't know why, except you're lucky to resume early and find one and like you know, take it to your room. That's what I was doing. But like my cousins, so my cousins actually bought their own drawing tables and always went to school every semester. Um, so basically, how you can finish your design before the semester, before you start exams, because exam starts, you're going to be reading other courses. So you want to be able to focus on those so you can have like a good grade. Other courses are extremely important and that's because first of all, whatever knowledge you're getting from other courses is what you're applying into your design. And your design studio is four units. So you want to take it extremely seriously and get A's all through so that you can have a good grade. Because if you fail your studio, it's also a prerequisite, so you won't go to the next one with spilling basically. Prerequisite courses are your design studio, design components. Um, and your structures. They call it the three legs of architecture. That's actually what they will tell you when you're at 100 level. Those three courses, don't ever fail them. If not, you are going to have an extra year because they are prerequisites. You can't do the next one until you pass the previous one. It's just that simple. Period. So I'll talk about next thing, Archifuse. So in architecture, we have, okay, in Covenant University, Omega semester, that's your second semester, there's always a period, a week that is used for recreational activities and you know, social activities. So we have dinners, every course has their course dinner, there's college dinner, there's dinner for the whole school, there is um basically um, events. Every course has their own thing. So for us, we always call it Archifuse. Then for us, we always have t-shirts every year, we have grid books as gifts every year, um, and also we go out so basically it's a really really fun moment and we always have like sporting activities dinner we have town and girls like other architects come speak to us like so 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 many things so the next thing is custom material now as an architecture student you're going to spend money because you are going to buy materials to draw with your like you're, you're going to have to draft so you need to buy materials to draw i'm going to put a list in the description my own list what i used to use when i buy my own things and i'm going to put a, a contact to like an address to where you can get if you're living in lagos i don't know if any, any other state in nigeria and i don't order online i can also give a link to someone that actually sources for these materials that you can buy and lastly i would also put up my own aki materials that you can buy used it will be way cheaper and not as costly as buying new ones so i'm selling some of my 
packing materials that I've used as well. I don't need any more. So you can also, if you're interested in that, just check the link, links in the description. I'll put every single thing in the description for you. Just know that, just be prepared to spend the money. Like, that's just my point. Just be prepared to spend money because you're going to buy a lot of materials for modeling, for drafting, especially. Another thing is dealing with creative blogs. And the way I actually deal with creative blogs is basically by watching YouTube videos. I just relax and just calm myself down and not think about things. Then I try to um, give myself more visual content, like look at other buildings. Um, yeah, so another way that I think you can solve your creative block is by drawing with your mates in studio. So you can basically see what your mates are doing. There's actually no cheating in design studio because your drawing throughout the semester is what you're going to jury and they're going to grade you on. So it's literally your exam you have on your plate. Go and meet your mates and ask them, how are you designing this? How are you designing that? That's literally how we do it. So all of us are in studio playing music, jamming up, enjoying ourselves, eating, you know, drinking drinks, you know, eating snacks. And we're meeting ourselves, oh, how did you do this? Okay, um, I want to span a beam of this meter. What kind of beam do you think I should use? Blah, 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 blah. You know, that's how we, we always roll. So like there's always this tight connection between us. And you always see our students walk on the road together and all that stuff. Carry load. Let me not lie, because you have to carry your papers. You can't leave your papers in the studio because you join the hall. You can't leave your papers in the hall because you join the studio. Like you have to always carry load. So for carrying load, we have portfolios. We have the white portfolio, which is the one that I have for sale currently, and the one that is in tube. I'm actually keeping that one because I do fashion design and it's also necessary for my fashion design career. So um yeah, so I'm going to sell off my portfolio. So if you guys, it's very very convenient. Like it helps you carry your papers and everything kind of load just load, just be confident honestly like i used to feel embarrassed with carrying like load but after a while i felt confident like yes i'm an architect and i'm carrying my drawings in my portfolio like I don't know. it was just cool sharp but like just know that you're going to carry it so, actually i actually did have blisters like here they've gone right now because like i stopped using the portfolio in my 300 level yeah but it's something that just don't put too much things in there. just let your papers be there i usually have another small bag for my pens my ink pens my markers my pencils my ruler all of all that so my set square all that stuff so i'll put a video of all the equipments that i have and put pictures of like different equipments that you need i'm just going to roll a clip at the end of the video so you can see different pictures of materials that you need and all that stuff and i put links to how you can get them in the description thank you so much for watching this video guys i really really appreciate and i've been waiting for a long time to do this video and i finally done it so i'm so happy if you like this video subscribe like share and also tell your other friends are going to study architecture even if it's in any school honestly it's really the same thing like what you need and all that stuff so let them watch this video and you know share to them at all and that will be the end of this video guys thank you so much for watching bye